the Utah Jazz have really struggled these past few years, not in the regular season, but once it comes to playoffs, they can never seem to attain the goals that they were able to kind of set in the regular season. They're never able to keep consistent with what they were doing previously. And that's why a lot of people on the internet and what I'm going to be talking about today in this video are trying to figure out what they need to do. Do they move one of these all-stars? Do they bring in more options? Is this, is this a coaching thing? What is it? And that's what I'm going to be talking about. So if this is your first time on the channel, my name is John. This is the Sports Advocate. Thank you so much for tuning in. Give me a like. Give me a dislike. Give me some criticism down below. Go ahead and give me your thoughts if you think they need to trade someone, bring someone in, or what they got to do. And also, I have content like this daily, so you might as well subscribe because if you enjoy this content, you're going to enjoy the next one. And I really put a lot into these videos, at least brain power wise, and I would surely appreciate it so much. But without further ado, should the Jazz blow it up or what should they do? That will likely be the title of this video, and that's exactly what this video is going to be about. What do they need to do? So we're going to go through player stats, team stats, like their history of stuff, uh, the actual team stats, uh, how they've done in certain categories of the statistic, at least for this year, and then what the next steps could and or should be. So let's get into player stats. Obviously, they have two phenomenal players in Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert, and that's the primary root of this video at this point. So Donovan Mitchell, 25 points. 9 points per game, 5.3 assists per game, 4.2 rebounds per game, and 1.5 steals per game. Very, very good numbers. All-star caliber at any level, any year. And he brings a lot to this team, so much to this team, and he wants to stay in Utah, which is something... My cat's going crazy. I, I bet you guys can hear that. Next up, Rudy Gobert, 15.6 points per game, 14.7 rebounds per game, and 2.1 steals per game. Along with, is it 2.1 steals per game and blocks per game? I think I messed it up. I bet it's 2.1 blocks per game and it's 0.7 steals per game. Sorry about that little mix up. Uh, another all-star caliber player most years. Uh, defense player of the year category in pretty much every year. He's won it multiple times already and been in contention even more times. Very, very good player, but maybe not so much on the end that this league is pushing towards more, which is that offensive-driven side of the ball. Then we have some of these side pieces that are important. Mike Conley, 13.7 points per game, 5.3 assists per game, 1.3 steals per game. Jordan, Clark, Jordan Clarkson's got 16 points per game. And Bogdan Bogdanovic, 13.7 points per game and 1.3 steals per game. So as a core... They're starting five, and, and a little bit of their backup. They got still some depth there. They have Hassan Whiteside. They have Joe Ingles. They, they have some backup, but I wouldn't say that their bench is that stellar. But as a core, as a starting five, as a, with a sixth man, they have a pretty good, pretty good lineup here. But for some reason, it's never able to hold out in playoffs. So Donovan Mitchell was drafted in, <coughs> I want to say, 2017. 2017 I want to say so the team stats their history in the playoffs versus their regular season 2016 2017 season they had a 51 and 31 record in the regular season they end up losing round two with a four and seven record in the playoffs which tells you they won round one four to three and got swept round two then 2017-2018 they had a 48 and 34 record in the regular season, and again they lose round two with a five to six record, which means you went four and two, and then got swept, or no, not swept. You went four and two, and then lost four to one. Not great. 2018, 2019 season, 50 and 32 in the regular season. Again, they always do very, very good in the regular season, but they lose round one, one to four. And round one, out, gone. 2019-2020 season, this is the COVID season, let that be known. A 44-28 and 28 record, you're on pace for 50 or so wins, 55-60 wins, somewhere around that, depending on how it goes. They end up losing round one, 3-4. to 2020-2021 season, 52-20, and 20. phenomenal. Number one in the league, in the West, 
great, great year for them. They end up losing round two. They had a winning record in the playoffs. They were six and five, which tells you they won four to one in the first series and then lose four to two in round two. So improvement, you might say. Not only do they make it past round one, which they didn't do the past two years, but they have a winning record in the playoffs. And they had a phenomenal record during the regular season. That's improvement, I would argue. Now this year, 2021-2022 season, 49-33. Only a couple more losses than wins uh, based on the pre- prior year. A couple more or a couple less wins, three less. They lose round one. Two and four against the Mavericks. Mavericks didn't have Luka most of the time. It was a struggle. This year and last year, Rudy Gobert looked like a struggle defensively. And we'll go into that a little bit at the end here, whether it's his fault or not. But they've struggled. They've never made it past round two since 2016, 2017. Never made it past round two. Which is very, very tough. It's a loud vehicle. And it's not a good vehicle. Wow. So what's the good and the bad for this team? Statistically speaking. They're seventh in scoring, the entire team. Very good. These are all regular season stats. I will let them be known. The playoff stats are a completely different story, but I wanted to point out the regular season stats because that should be your foundation. But for some reason, this team, it isn't. They're seventh in scoring. I want to say they were super low on the totem pole in scoring for the postseason. <clears throat> they're 11th in three point percentage, so they're quite good shooters, and they had a decent amount of uh, attempts for the shooting, so they're pretty good shooters they're third in rebounding and that goes a lot to their post work Hassan Whiteside and Rudy Gobert very good for them down there in the block especially Rudy Rudy I mean 14.7 rebounds per game that's that's very 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 good now they're also 11th in blocks and that goes a lot again to Rudy Gobert who's having 2.1 blocks per game now where does it go downhill well you do have 2.1 blocks or you do have t- the 11th in blocks but your 20th in steals so you might get a lot of blocks you might limit the amount of shots that are going up but you're not limiting the possessions as much as you should you're not stealing the ball during the play you have to make a stop at the end of the play and who does that go on so much i would argue that goes more on the guards than down in the post I'd say very much it goes so on the guards more than down in the post. They're also 27th in assists. So they're not moving the ball well at all on the offensive side of the ball. They're not finding that open man for them. Whether that means that you're doing a lot of one-on-ones or you're passing the ball and just keeping it instead of shooting it right away. I'm not exactly sure. I didn't watch a ton of Jazz games. I did watch some. I do like Mitchell. But... You're not moving the ball at a consistent rate on that team at, to get effective shots. You're not finding that cutting man. You're not finding that open three-point shot after a bunch of drive and passes. You're not getting the ability to have a kick out and then a two-dribble drive up. And that's what the team is limiting on. And I think a big reason why they may be so low on assists is because they're two stars. Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert. When Rudy Gobert gets that ball... Most of the time, he's dribbling them down, and he takes too long to, before he gets a shot off for it to be counted as assist, or he shoots it, misses it, gets his own rebound, and then puts it back up, which doesn't count as an assist. With Donovan Mitchell, on the other hand, I feel like when he gets the ball, he wants to do a bunch of dribble moves, which takes too long, and although he does get his points, it's limiting the amount of assists. So how much do assists matter? I still think they matter a lot, because it really shows how well your team is able to allow your teammates to get a chance. Find that cutting man. Find that fast break. Find that open three because you're getting double teamed and all that stuff. So even though you might be able to score being seventh in the league in scoring, you need to still be able to get assists to make your team work together well. And that's a big thing, especially when you come to playoffs. I didn't have playoff stats here, but you might be a phenomenal scoring team But if you can't move the ball to find the open man, when it comes to playoffs, they're going to scheme for it. 
If they go Donovan Mitchell is that best scorer on that team by far, send doubles his way if you can. Do this, do that. Rudy Gobert, make sure he doesn't get a low, low block. And that's exactly what happened. That's exactly what happened. You limit their two guys. And if they can't get assists, they can't pass the ball well to get an open shot. You're immediately going to lower the number of points that they're getting. Which leads to you immediately having a big, big head start scoring-wise on that team. And this is going to be a shorter video if you've watched my other videos. What do they do next? That's the big question. That's what everyone's asking. You trade one of these guys? You trade the other guy? Do you just build around this team? Do you got to move coaches? Now, there's been some turmoil within the team, not only for the players, but the coaching as well. Rudy Gobert has said that this ain't working. It's got to be me or him for Donovan Mitchell. Donovan Mitchell has not said something as extravagant as that. And did Rudy Gobert actually say that, or is what was posted on media to grab attention? I'm not exactly sure. I didn't check into his press conference where he supposedly said that. But do you have to move somebody? I think that's the first thing. Do you have to move somebody? Well, you have you have a good start in five. I think Conley's contract's extremely big, but I think it's running out here soon. You got some younger guys in Donovan Mitchell. You got Jordan Clarkson. You got some backups in uh, Joe Ingles, Hassan Whiteside. I think they have a couple other options. Excuse me. But I think the bench is their issue at this point. It really falls off after that like seventh guy. You end up with like Royce O'Neal, who ain't a star player. I can say that. He's not on the bench, but you still need star-like players that are really, really good at one thing on that bench to make you better. Role players, if you may call it that. And I feel like the Jazz don't have that. So I think if you add to this team, you add a bench to this team, whether that's a defensive heavy bench because you're already doing well shooting at 11th and 3-point percentage, and you're already scoring well, so just add some defense heavy bench. You could do that. Take some pressure off Rudy, so Rudy's not constantly having to help over, because that's what's always happening. Rudy Gobert is always helping over on defense because someone else gets blown out, and then his guy ends up scoring because his guy's open because he Rudy has to cut to the basket to help try and block a layup or an easy jumper, so his guy's left open. And that's why it always looks like Rudy's not the best defender, because his guy's scoring a lot on the stat sheet, but when you watch, most of the time, he's not near that guy because he had to go help somebody else. So, I think you bring a little defense to this bench. You bring in some passing, some a lot of passing, if we're being honest, playmaking. My, dude, my cat's going crazy today. Bring in some playmaking, bring in some defense. Even if it's not some stellar, stellar playmaking, uh, do exactly what the Bulls did with Alex Crusoe. You bring in a guy that's extremely good at defense, bringing a lot of hustle to your team, but can pass the ball really well and find those guys in the fast break, find those guys for an open three. That's a prime example. Alex Caruso, perfect example. Now, they're not going to steal Caruso, but that's a pretty good example if you ask me. Some other options? I mean, you have plenty. I think Jordan Clarkson brings a good amount of both of the team, scoring and defense maybe he needs some improvement on it but I think he does a pretty good job at it that's I think bench is what this team needs to bring to the team more than anything else I think that should be the key focus for this time that needs to be what you improve on now coaching you might also bring that up do you try to move on from coaching I don't think so you're making the playoffs consistently every single year. You're having winning records by a good amount. I mean, you split the season at 41 wins. The closest they've got to splitting a season is the 17-18 season when they went 48-34. and 34. But then you look at playoffs and you struggle in playoffs. So is, is that reason to move your coaches? Well, maybe, maybe the Clippers. You look at what the Clippers did. They moved on from coaches, and when when they were still making playoffs with Paul George and Kawhi Leonard, they moved on. Was it the right choice? Well, we're not sure because we haven't seen them play a bunch together yet. But, you know, they, they move on. But then, you know, is, is that really the right choice? How many times on LeBron's team, wherever he's at, 
does LeBron say, I want this coach out, they bring the new coach, and they're just as good because maybe the players are the reason they're doing so good and not the coaches. That's a question that you need to start asking for this Jazz team. Is it the coaching? They're not coaching the right scheme for the team. That could be a thing. Now, lastly, the big question that everyone's been asking, do you need to move an all-star? Do you need to move one of these top two guys? Your two guys. Now, some people would argue bring in a third guy and make a big three. And you might say that they already have that if Jordan Clarkson gets it going. But do you need to move one of your one or your number two? Do you move Mitchell or do you move Gobert? Well, which one do you move and why do you move him? What are you losing if you move him? That stuff. What are you getting back? Because you have to trade him. Neither of them are unrestricted free agents. Well, Mitchell, plenty of value if you want to trade him. You could bring in most guys that aren't MVP candidates at this point because he is an all-star can all-star player capable of it. He is young. He has proved his worth. He has proved his loyalty. So you could get a pretty penny back from Mitchell. Now, who are you in back? You could get people like Bradley Beal, like Zach Levine. That hurts to say, but you could. And you could say, I want to move to the forward heavy side and bring in just casual playmakers at the point and target people at the level of like Brandon Ingram. His level, I don't think the Pelicans move on from him, but you could do that. Heck, you could probably even, if Zion really wants out the bed, probably make a move for Zion using Donovan Mitchell. And I think that'd work pretty well. But what are you losing if you if you move Mitchell? You, we don't know who they would get back, so what would they lose? Well, they're losing an all-star camp, caliber player who has the potential to become an MVP candidate. Keyword, potential. You're losing the best scorer on your team by a long shot. There's no one else that averages more than 20 points per game, and he's having 25.9. So you're losing your best scorer. You're losing your number one option. He He's a shooting guard, but he might as well play point guard with how the scheme is run around him. You're losing a guy that's able to do a little bit of everything with his assists, steals, and rebounds. Okay. Or you move Rudy Gobert. Now, what can you get back with him? I think you can get, you know, as a Bulls fan, I'm hearing all the time, go get Gobert. And I'm not against it, but I think what you'd have to give up for maybe is a little steep. You could go get Vucevic with him. You could go get an all-star capable guard for, uh, from a team that needs that defensive heavy center and they think the rest of the team is good enough. I mean, if the Lakers are willing, you you might be able to go get AD because his injuries, and maybe they don't believe in his injury, all his injuries going on, and maybe you go do that and you throw in a, a pick here or there. You got options for both these guys to move, and I think you get a decent amount back. But what do you lose if you trade Rudy Gobert? Well, you lose an all-star caliber player again. You lose a B- defensive player of the year candidate. You're losing your best rebounder for a landslide, and you're losing your best defender by an even bigger landslide. Yes, sometimes it looks like he's not that great because he has to help over, but he's great. He's a great defender. So you're losing a lot if you trade either of those guys. Now, obviously, you're trying to work to bring something back if you're trading them, and you'll probably gain a good amount back of what you would be losing with these guys. But who? Who do you move now? So Rudy Gobert, defensive-like player, he pretty much fits in any scheme, I would argue. You don't have to build around him so much as use him as a piece to to bring people in and then he is able to build around them. A great rebounder, great defender, he can still score, averaging 15. Or you keep Mitchell. You got an all-star guard. And sometimes guards are hard to come by at a great rate. He can score. You can surround him with the pieces, whether that's that defensive big man who can still rebound but doesn't score as well, and some shooters and playmakers on the side of him with defenders. I'm not sure who you, which one you choose. I think it, it depends. Mitchell, that's your number one guy if you keep Mitchell. 
and he might be easier to build around if he is your number one guy because you just want to bring in playmaking, defense, and what you have in Gobert at the center position just maybe lower a little bit of one thing, you know? And now if you're bring, keeping Gobert, well, you could go get another new number one guy and have him still be that number two piece, but maybe work a little bit better with him or build a different scheme or things like that. But it, let me bring a point to your attention real quick. And I think most of us understand this. I think most people understand this, and that's why they say Mitchell is probably the guy you keep there. It's easier to come by a great defensive rebounding center than it is to come by an all-star level guard who can score, rebound, and assist, and steal at a good level. I mean, it's it's kind of hard to get somebody that's averaging just barely under 26 points per game at the guard position, who is still young, who is still very talented, and who is dedicated to your team, especially in Utah. So I think you got to choose one, you choose Mitchell. And you move Gobert if you have to move somebody. But I think it's easier and better overall if you just do some bench finagling with defensive playmaking. And, and that's that's my final resolution here. I don't think you have to move either of them. Do I think that it will happen? Probably. If it's not this year, it's next year. One of them's gone if they can't turn around. But I think the bench is the easiest and best thing to do here. But with that being said, that's the video. So comment your thoughts. Do you think someone has to move? Who should move? Or do you just need to add more depth? So comment that. And while you're at it, if you stuck through this long, I'm sure you enjoyed this. Why not give me a thumbs up? And subscribe because I have content like this daily. And seriously, it means a lot to me and the algorithm and other people finding me. But this content... There's a lot of effort that goes in this, even with me being small. And I'm not going to let you guys down if you give me a shot. I promise you that. But, as always, no need to waste any more of your time. So, I hope it taught you something today. Hope it made you smile. Hope it made you laugh. That's something that's really important to me. Affecting someone else's life in a great way. And, as always, you guys all be safe out there.